I'm just doing little shorts um, and to build that momentum, to build that audience, to eventually start doing longer form videos where uh, I'll start teaching on topics or like equipping Christians, all these sort of things. And then eventually do live streams, live teachings, live Bible studies, all these different things. That's the goal. Um, but right now I'm just doing shorts to build that momentum because shorts is just, it's just, it's crazy how easy it is to build like an audience through shorts. And, you know, my goal, I'm, I'm doing a lot of entertainment shorts right now. Um, and it's, that's not my goal, but I'm just doing that because it builds an audience. So eventually mm. I'm going to move away from like that um, entertainment side of things um, and then start moving more into like what, what God really wants me to, to talk about. Mm, so, so your shorts are still kingdom focused, but when you say entertaining, what do you mean by that? I mean, like, for example, if you look at my YouTube, you'll see a lot of like, um, right now, I just made a video, like, there was this little kid uh, that he was so excited to get baptized. Um, like the person baptizing him was just talking too long. So he's like, I'll do it myself. And he dunked himself. <laughs> so it, it's it's like, it's funny, it's entertaining. Um, and people will stop and watch that, mm -hmm. especially that's a I'm a new face they're not going to be they're not going to stop to just watch some some random person so if I can catch them with that entertainment aspect mm. um to start building that I guess um familiarity with me eventually um I know God is going to tell me that time is like all right now let's let's start going longer and deeper and mm. actual meat in the things that I'm doing hey I so like right that. now I like that. if you look at my channel it's like reactions or um, just short little funny things entertainment things and then i'll add like short little things like three things you didn't know about this or that um to kind of like you know push in that direction of i actually want to teach you and i want to give you some meat hey that's great bro the ones i've seen of you have been mostly meat though and so you're saying entertainment yeah, so, i'm i'm over here shook because i haven't seen nothing <laughs> <laughs> you know i've so, seen meat yeah it's funny because i'm i'm being very intentional with my instagram Okay. Um, I'm not, I'm not posting any, like, um, just like entertainment stuff on my Instagram. I'm I keeping like that. that like strictly That's holy. Instagram is yeah, holy, literally, bro. <laughs> literally. I have it. I have it consecrated, but YouTube, <laughs> Facebook and all that on um, like TikTok. I That's where you'll see all, all of those. I'll, I'll still add those meat ones. Um, but I'm building those through You're trying um, to get the babies out here first. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying to get the baby Christians. I like it, but how old are you? Yeah. 20. I'm turning 21 next week, dude. Bro, Literally seven days. 20, about to be 21 years old and out here yeah. spreading the love of, of Christ and just the truth of the Bible. We got yeah. Eric Rivera here, man. I pressed record when you were sharing your, your heart about what you're doing because I feel like that needs to be heard big time. Amen. So we're live, bro. So uh, we're set Let's up. Go. We're good. That's what I do, man. I just press the record button. We're, we're in there. So thank you for coming sure. on. I like birds, man. It's so exciting. I'm out here in the cabins right now um, writing Good a book boy. about Jesus himself and uh, just the spirit of God. And uh, he's just been putting so much on my on my heart this trip. And I'm so happy I was uh, able to kind of pencil this in uh, mid yeah. while here because it's just uh, having another brother in Christ to talk to during this time is just special to me. So uh, thank you for, for joining us. You've had some recent success as soon as you launched your ministry. It feels like you were what? How many videos in before you hit like the 50,000 view threshold on one of your, I don't, your accounts? I don't even know. I think. I, I think on Instagram, I had like five videos and I already surpassed like 50,000 and all the other platforms also are doing so well. I think in total, uh, I've started three weeks ago. Uh, I think I checked the last night. I'm, I think I'm over 2 million views or um, impressions wow. or engagement across yeah. all platforms, which is just absolutely mind blowing. What do you That's think? Just, like, what do you think the reason for that is in the, in the spiritual spiritually yeah. um spiritually it's just that's that's the grace that comes with being obedient mm. i'm somebody that i will never go ahead of god if god if god doesn't tell me to go somewhere or say yes to to a specific thing i'm not going to do it so i know that god sent me to do online ministry um so i'm not surprised by the results because i know who sent me and Ooh. i know that the grace i know the grace that comes behind our obedience and i think that's the that's the fruit. It's the fruit of obedience, the grace that comes behind it. Um, when you do something that God has approved, when you do something that God is backing up, man, there's no, there's there's nothing that can stop it. There's no algorithm. 
Um, there's no attention span, you know, um, that will stop that. It's because the grace of God is behind it. Bro, that's so good. And that's such a powerful testimony. Uh, I just experienced something today. When you talk about mm -hmm. slow, uh, no obedience versus, uh, we're going to talk about no obedience versus slow obedience. So I mm -hmm. was um, on a hike, like I was kind of telling you in my email. Yeah. And it, this was my first hike where I went like solo dolo, no, like um, no camera on me, like, you know, no Nikon. Had a little uh -huh. walking stick and everything. It was like, it was the one where it was like, all right, get out here and do this. So that like, go see God before you write about God, essentially, you mm, know? That's good. And um, so I go down to the, I'm, I get down to the river. It's not even a river. It's like a little stream with uh, some rocks and, um, you know, some water pressure and stuff. And I see this one spot in the, in like the little water area where I'm like, man, that's probably big enough to swim in right there. <laughs> if, if you had to pick one spot out here, cause it's not very, very deep, you know? Yeah. And um, next thing you know, Holy Spirit whispers, get in. And I was no like, way. I was like, no, what? No. I don't, <laughs> like my flesh fought so hard. I'm telling you, oh I made up gosh. every excuse not to do it. And I was just yeah. over here just like, man, if I walk away from this, like I might walk away from something he has for me. True. So I decided to get off my um my, my shoes and my socks and my shirt. Got off your high horse. <laughs> I did, bro. I was so and I'm like, I can't put my socks on unless I sit down. You know what I mean? I'm like one of those dudes, you know. Oh so God. knowing this beforehand, I was just like, this is gonna be such a nightmare by the time I get out of it. But I did it. I went in there and I felt so free and so liberated and just so That's like true. willing to be obedient, even even because I just heard this parable last night in Matthew. Mm -hmm. 25 that talked about the fact that like god would rather have slow obedience from you mm. than no obedience from you you know so yeah. and i i've always been taught um especially as i became a dad i'll say this to my kids i'll be like slow no obedience is no obedience <laughs> then god out here like twisted it upside down for me when That's he kind of showed me that he does that and, uh, yeah. and it was crazy so like the fact that you were you're acting on that obedience and you're seeing the fruit of that in the um in the online ministry space is huge because obviously you have a vision for it that's bigger than just the views what's your vision yeah. like for it when um and and when it comes to the one like the one individual that you're reaching yeah man i love it because the the one is so important and my like going into this like i'll, I'll kind of backtrack from from backtrack from the very beginning there was um a week in the summer where i was like Lord, I need to, I need specific forensic instructions from you. Like I need A, B, C, D. This is what you need to do. This is where you need to go because I'm, I'm coming off. Um, I'm graduating soon from Bible college and I need to, I need, like I said earlier, I'm not going to go ahead of God. So I'm like, Lord, where do you want me to go next? And it was bro, two weeks straight, straight vision download from heaven like mm. so much vision i've never i've never gotten so much instruction clearly specific in detail like i have for this before ever in my life so i was so excited so um uh, planning out like okay this is who you want to reach lord i know i know what you've called me to i know my purpose and i know my calling um and the 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 desire in my heart that god has placed for the one for my online ministry is that they would simply encounter the God that I encountered. Now, you and I, we both serve Jesus, right? But we, we both have a different perspective about him. Jesus is, he's so infinite and he's so grand. Just like a cube has many faces, so does our God. He has many faces. I see him one way, you see him another way. He's the same person, but the way I've experienced him is different from the way I've um, somebody else has experienced him. And it is my desire that God has placed in my heart, that the God that I've seen, the God of my childhood, the God of my youth, the God of the supernatural, the God of power, that I've seen with my own two eyes, that people would experience that God through my videos, through my teachings, through my life, really. The scripture says uh, that we are written epistles, that we are literally walking Bibles. So it is my desire that this, everything here that I put together, like, if, if I were to show you a picture of my room before all of this, man, you would be shocked. It was just a simple, it's a simple bedroom of a teenage guy, you know, <laughs> but I, I completely turn around and you may see a bunch of technology and, and really cool stuff, but really this is an altar. This is an altar that people can encounter my God through. So that's my mm -hmm. desire, man, that people would encounter my God.
Ooh, man, that's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. That's so well said, bro. You're a sharp individual, man. How'd you get this yeah, way? Appreciate it. Um, man, it really just by the grace of God, I, 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 um, I've always been very intelligent. I've always been very quick and that's just the way that God wired me. But man, like, um, just like Paul said, he, he was the sharpest of the Pharisees, but <laughs> with not, without the grace of God, man, all of that is counted as trash. So I, I really count it all to, to grace for real. Hey, my man. And I love that. We talked about in our messages a little bit about giving the crown back to Jesus and just oh, consecrating yeah. everything good. to him. So like with your newfound success in the content creation space, how have you felt like a battle? Have you maybe you haven't yet because it's been three weeks, but have you felt like the battle between like your flesh when it comes to like seeing like good numbers versus like what God has the, you on in the mission? Um, Man, I, honestly, dude, I would say I'm so focused right now on like, this is like my whole life is to serve him that it hasn't really like um gotten to me. But I think it's because I've been so well prepared for, for I've been saved now for four years. And man, like a little bit about my testimony. Once I got saved, and once I was born again, my life was completely thrusted into the kingdom of God. Like mm. the amount of acceleration and speed that I went at was like, it, it was, it's an anomaly. Um, and so what does that look like? Are you talking about like in high school, small groups? Like what do you, what was your, what was your ministry before this was? So I got saved when I was 16, um, uh, at the end of my sophomore year of high school, as soon as I got saved that summer, my youth pastor invited me to um, uh, the youth internship that he was doing. And so I was at church all day long, every single day of the week. We did mission trip, teachings. We led um, in different capacities, served, all that. I was consistent in, in everything. My life changed. And it was that summer that I felt the call to ministry. Um, and the very next the very next school year, I had um, I had enough credits in my high school to graduate early and I felt it from the Lord to go ahead and do that. Um, and he also sent me to a completely different uh, high school that I don't know anybody at. And he told me to go start a Bible um, club there. And that's what I did my senior year, sophomore year, um, going into summer, I'm saved coming out of summer, I'm starting a, a Bible club um, in, a, in a completely new territory that I don't know. But wow. I know that God sent me there. And that man, it's beautiful because I, I see the fruit of it today. Like, it's so cool seeing, like, it's still going on even years after me. Um, but, um, yeah, I I joined Bible college after that. Uh, when I graduated from high school, uh, I was in youth ministry for my entire time being in um, Bible college. I'm graduating now soon, so I already, um, already transitioned out of youth ministry. But really, I was essentially acting as a youth pastor. So that was my role, um, just doing daily pastoral ministry for uh the next gen of my church um but yeah that's kind of how it looked like for me but my 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 life skyrocketed man after after i met jesus um and it was just all focus on him 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 and i discovered myself i discovered my purpose i discovered my lane so now that i'm in, i'm in this place where these four years of development these four years of being hidden in in obscurity it was character development it was um humility it was learning that process of all right i gotta lay my crown down in everything so i feel like um it's it's as if i already fought the battle if that hey. makes sense and i think that's i think that's why um i'm seeing so much success as well is because god understands it's not going to get to me because i know at the end of the day i'm going to say lord this is your this is your glory this is your honor and this is your power. I'm just a mirror um, for you. And I made a vow with God. And I said, Lord, um, if I'm going to do this, then I'm going to need you to send the people. And if you send the masses, if you send the multitudes, it is my vow to you that I will always point them back to Jesus. So that's my that's my covenant with God. And that's why I know that he's going to keep sending people. Because at the end of the day, I'm always going to lay down my crown whenever I go to bed. Um, it doesn't matter how many views come, how many people come, I'm always going to point them back to Jesus and I'm always going to be at, uh, at his feet. Hey, bro. That's real. I love that. That's what we're on yeah. right now. We're on that right now as well. We, um, I had an incredible mm -hmm. phone call with my boy, Ali, who, um, you guys definitely got to connect in Miami. I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. That, that'd be amazing. 
uh y'all would you know have like uh, he's he's one to have like a three-hour session and, and oh have, i love it <laughs> have no have no that's, regard not have no worry in the world about people's that, like that's my cup of tea. you know what i mean like it's yeah and he'll clip every clip you know like it'll be it'll be out for 60 days straight you know so let's go uh, y'all would definitely have a good time but we were talking about that the other night man um when he gave me a mm -hmm. call when i was up here we we're just talking about like giving our ministries back to him and like making mm -hmm. sure that we're okay with like do you trust your ministry or do you, or do you trust God? You know, and that's something that the Lord put on my heart big that's time, big. especially because we've been in it for three years now, you know? So yeah, um, just making sure we're keeping that focus of doing it for the one is kind of mm -hmm. the MO for everything right now. And the fact that you're kind of already have battled that and you've prepared the sails for the wind to blow, like right. that's why it's, you know, the that's Lord good. is being faithful in that, you know? So keep that up, man. And you're reaching a whole different audience that, that I probably could ever reach. I'm about, th I'm 30 now. And you're about mm -hmm. to turn twenty one. You, you don't. You don't seem thirty at all. I. I. I swear. I. I. I thought you were like at least like twenty five, mid twenties for sure. Hey, that's that's, well. that's good on Cam. You know, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Uh, let's you didn't pay Cam. me to say that. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well, I appreciate it, bro. But you're really tapping yeah. into like that Gen Z um demographic that I feel like is hungry for the word. They're hungry yeah. for truth, and they're hungry for mm. Holy Spirit. You know, so like you're able to really connect with them and you're so good at like looking on um at straight in the camera like while you're talking to them you're like really connecting with people through through your videos so uh i know it's a matter of time before it just keeps on compounding you know and next thing yeah. you know you're a you're a name in this in this uh online christian ministry space because there's not very many names but the ones that are have made it have put in the work and you seem to be also True. putting in the work and leading people to christ all through it so i'm excited for the journey Man. bro Thanks, man. I love um, that you mentioned that about Gen Z, because myself part is Gen Z as well, um, especially being in youth ministry and so deep into it. Mm -hmm. um, I've been able to like travel to different churches and and really see like the landscape across the U.S. of Gen Z. And man, like the amount of hunger and thirst for righteousness, as as the scriptures declare, is like it's out of this world. They're so hungry for the real thing. They're so hungry for the deeper things. Um, and I thank God that that's exactly what he's put on my heart. It's the deeper things of God. Because mm -hmm. that's what Gen Z needs. I, I did um, in part of my for my school, my university, um, I did a course on youth ministry. And dude, the studies are crazy. Uh, the studies show that I'm uh, forgetting the exact numbers, but it's upwards of the 80 plus percent it's probably in the 90s of P of kids in Gen Z right now. They have like no biblical framework whatsoever. Zero. Wow. Meaning like when when you say Jesus, they're thinking their classmate Jesus. Like they don't they don't think Bible. They don't think they don't know the stories of Moses or Abraham um, or Noah. They, they have no framework whatsoever, which is just mind boggling to believe. Um, and something that I was doing with, with um, when I was serving in, in youth ministry was I saw a lot of the past generation trying to package Jesus as um, super fun, um, like super invitable and like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and, and I think that um, they had a pure heart in doing it because they, they, they felt like that was the wise thing to attract young people. Like, oh, look, Jesus is fun. Like Jesus, like Jesus is cool. the world. Like, yeah, just like he, they're trying to prescribe Jesus as being like, like the world is, you know? Yeah. And, and even, even on that side of the spectrum, but also the other where it's healthy, how they're like, they're projecting like the biblical Jesus, but they're trying to make it super cool and super fun. But I, I found out, man, that dude, with these studies, Gen Z does not need a redefinition of Jesus. Gen Z needs a definition of Jesus. They have no idea who he is. So when wow. I was what I was doing in, in, in the youth ministry was, hey, this is Jesus. He's the son of God. I'm, I'm, I love theology, too. So I, I like to throw that in there. He's the son of God. He was 100 percent man, 100 percent divine and all these things. So I would break it down to them and do the hunger that they would just like rise to when they finally found the truth, man, there's nothing like it. And I think that the church is moving into a dispensation where um, we're going to see, we're going to see uh, the power of God and the spirit of God move. Like we've never seen him move before. And I think it's going to be through that generation and through that hunger uh, that, 
that this generation is craving. So I'm yeah. I'm so excited for I the heard, future of the church. Seriously. I, I heard a prophecy about Gen Z specifically that said okay. that same zeal that they had for like the Black Lives Matter um, movement that was going on, that same zeal, God mm -hmm. is going to use that for his glory. Amen. You know, and like that, that same kind of passion that they have for justice, they're going to use it for the Lord's justice. Yeah. And I yeah, was like, amen, true. let's go. I received that. And I just saw this video the other day in Portugal. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw, I shared on my, my Instagram and it was a, uh, it was basically a 2 million ton wine dispensary. Oh dude. Stuff. Yes. I saw that. And it was flip. It was like going down the hill. And I don't I know, that. like I, it was when I was out here and I saw that and I was like, Lord, mm -hmm. are you pouring your spirit on man right now? Are you pouring your spirit on flesh? I like know. the word says, like, yeah. yo, is this really when I happening? saw that, when I saw that, the first thing I did was I went to the comments. I'm like, did anybody mention did anything anybody about catch Jesus? it? Yeah. Did anybody yes. catch this? You know? <laughs> the first and I didn't see nothing. But I didn't see anything either, dude. I did the same thing. Dude, that's crazy, man. Yeah. But it's maybe true. it's maybe it's only like only a select few of eyes will see that. You know, it, again, maybe yeah. those those captions, 90% of those people have never heard of Jesus. You think they're gonna find that that's scripture true. in Revelation? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? that's, so it's like that's why the Jesus, word is so important. Yeah. Jesus said, Let them who have ears, let them hear. Same thing with with the eyes, those who have sight. Some people, some people see it, some people can't. And uh, I think it's it's our job as ministers to open their eyes. That's that. right. Have you experienced that yet? Have you experienced somebody kind of coming closer to the Lord through your ministry uh, online? Yeah, dude, it's been like the most encouraging thing has been the testimonies, the messages, the DMs, man, the emails that I've been receiving. Like I take screenshots of every single comment, every because you, you'll have your negative comments like day one, bro. I'm, <laughs> I was already being called a false prophet. I'm like, I know I'm doing something right. <laughs> this yeah, right? is happening already day one. But you, you know, you have all these negative comments. And um, at first I was like, oh my gosh, dude, people can be really mean. Cause I was, I was genuinely shocked. Um, Cause I'm like, yo, I'm just trying to help people. And like, they're saying like, you're typing huge paragraphs with scripture. And I'm like, my goodness, dude. Um, yeah. And I quickly, I quickly adapted, but seeing the testimonies, just the, the messages um, I had somebody um, my very first day that I launched, I woke up. Uh, the next morning, uh, they texted me. They said, hey, just uh, watch because I did a salvation video on my YouTube channel just mm -hmm. as my base just to launch, um, just sharing like the, the basic gospel. And they messaged me on Instagram and they said, hey, just watch your video. And you know what? I'm not religious myself, but the entire video, I felt something, man. And I feel like I just um, need to get closer to God. And um, they're like, I kind of, you know, don't want to make it super public, but I just wanted to let you know that um, I felt something really real when I was watching. And Ooh. I'm like, dude, this is like somebody who is is probably an atheist. I'm not sure exactly what they believed in, but that's the power of God that they would just watch a video day one, man. And I have received like legit hundreds plus messages of people um, like, thank you so much. I needed to hear this. Even something as simple as that. Um, yeah. I Oh, last night. Um, I, I think I did a quick prayer on healing on, in a short and somebody commented, I felt, um, like a gust of wind hit my wrist. Um, and, and I was like, dude, the amount of miracles <laughs> and just testimonies coming from this is crazy. I wish I could list them all, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's my favorite thing, bro. And what we're doing right now is like, I've experienced similar things right now and, you know, we're building up treasures in heaven, you know, like we're, when you're, when you're working for the kingdom, I think a lot of people don't talk about this because it sounds like it's um egotistical in ways or yeah. like, you know, haughty. But in reality, it's like when, when you're working for the kingdom, like you're really stacking up like fruit up there, True. you know, it's like you're, you're building the kingdom out. And like, you don't got to think about what's on this side of earth. Like the Lord's going to bless you with his left hand and his right hand down here. He's yeah. going to put something in both hands down here, but up That's there. True. Like you're, you're making, you're making waves up there and you might not even know it. You might not, not ever see it until you get there. You know, when we talk about like putting the crowns back at the feet of Jesus, it's like, mm -hmm. we're working for that crown, you know, in, in, in a sense, the jewels in the crown is what we're working for mm -hmm. to be more scripturally back. So yeah. it's like, we're trying to get these jewels, you know, by doing kingdom work, anything that you sow, you reap, you know, so True. what you sow here on, on, on earth, we're reaping in heaven. So when we're, when we're doing these videos and it's like, man, it's like, 
my whole day revolving around Jesus today. And I love that. I went on a hike. I'm yeah. in the word. I'm in my A.W. Tozer book. Ooh, that one's a heater. <laughs> ooh, 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 <laughs> to God. Oh, my gosh. I cannot recommend A.W. Tozer enough. And Buddy oh grew up God. like on a farm and everything. Like I was reading about his life today. I was shook. And then, That's boom, funny. we're doing a podcast, you know, and, and I'm writing a book about Jesus. It's like Dude. everything is revolving around him. And it's like I'm working for him. You know what I mean? That's I am the kingdom his servant. life, man. That's the kingdom life. So, That's yeah, I do this full time to answer your question. Yeah, I do it full time. Amen. And, uh, Amen. Everything else that I do on the side for income is also going to come together and be kingdom minded as well. So our whole yeah. vision is doing it for the one. So, like, I love everything that. that we got our hands in is all all for him. So, yeah, we do it full time. And. I love it. It's a blessing. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. That's that is like that is the the goal that God desires every believer to get to. Hmm. That when the when you like kind of look at your schedule, it's Jesus, 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 Jesus. And people will hear that and they'll think, "Oh, I got to be at church or I got to be on my knees praying or I got to be reading the Bible all day." Mm -mm. No. You 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 did something fun. You went like hiking on a mountain, but Jesus was still at the center of it. Like yeah. that's the that's the the place that God wants us to get us at, where Jesus is in the center of everything that we do, and it all revolves about Him. Um, and it even, doesn't have to be religious. You even know? when we work too, you think about that verse in Colossians, I think three twenty three, that talks about like even when you work yes. for man, like do it for the Lord. Yep. You know, so like everything your yeah. hands touch, your 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 uh your hands go to the plow, boom, you're, you're, you're doing it for the Lord. You're not doing it for man. So that's uh, right. And that's where you get to see the real fruit at. you get to see what God's doing through that. And you get to learn and grow and all these other things that are just like all the revelations, the downloads, like all that stuff yeah. is so exciting. And when you were saying earlier that uh -huh. uh, how many people are coming into you or coming like to your, to your ministry, have you also built up a team or are you doing everything kind of solo dolo right now? Man, right now I'm solo dolo, uh, but I believe eventually, um, you know, the plan is to scale and I, and I believe God will send those destiny helpers. But right now I am solo dolo and dude, my, like, just like you dude, my whole day is just like <laughs> making videos like, Lord, what do you want me to say? Or what do people need to hear today? And just planning it out recording it editing boom same thing over again uh but how do you man, feel I, when you create for the lord like what does that feel like describe that to the people like the process uh like yeah. actually doing it or the or feeling like the joy I, probably the joy oh yeah I, I i preached a message once about like being used by the holy spirit um and the audience was uh the youth gen z and in, when when i was preaching that or right before i, um, I preached that I, was, I said lord what do they need to hear um, and God told me something very interesting. He said, a lot of people think they have, they have like this, um, negative connotation to being used. And I was like, Whoa, cause for me, like you hear, I want to be used by God. And it's so amazing, but I'm, I wasn't thinking in the perspective of somebody who's broken, somebody who's been abused, somebody who's been used. Mm. And so it, the, the enemy, the lie of the enemy is that being used by God is like being used by man, which is not true at all. So man, being used by God, and in my context, it's it's uh, making videos. There's nothing more fulfilling. There's nothing more purposeful. Um, and there's nothing more that brings you so much joy than being used by God. So I it's it, it breaks my heart that those who have been used by others in, in, in such a negative way. Um, but I know the Holy Spirit can change that to now. I do want to be used by by someone and his name is Jesus. So man, it's 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 there's nothing like it, seriously. Would how would you encourage somebody that maybe mm -hmm. is um, you know, going through a just a mediocre existence in the kingdom and they're not mm -hmm. uh tapping into how they could be used? How how would you best advise somebody to um be used by God and know what that looks like? Yeah. Man, it's it's um it's such a intricate and complex question because, you know, people are so different. They come from so many different walks and backgrounds. But I guess in general, uh, I would say um, to just look, look at what God is doing in other people. See the joy that comes from serving him. See the uh, the fulfillment that comes from serving him in others. 
And I know that the Holy Spirit will do something in them that it's, something's going to click in their heart and in their mind to be like, I want to give that a try. And once you have that initial hunger, that's when we can start working um, to like, you know, rewriting all those things that the enemy tried to do and now walk them in that place where they could be used by God. And, and, you know, there's a whole process to that, but I would say to just look at the testimonies of others. And, and I think that God will do something when, when they, when they see that. Mm, I like that a lot. Cause you know, it's so easy for the, the, the people with the podcast and the, in the video creation platforms to be able to say stuff like that, but not everybody is like cut from that same cloth. So it's like, yeah. for instance, my wife just took a position at our church thread mm -hmm. uh, back in back home in Cleburne. And uh, she's like the ministry director there now. So like, she's in charge of like and overseeing the uh, thank you. Yeah. She's very excited about it. So, so she's in charge of doing the volunteers and stuff like that at the church and the mm -hmm. nursery. And um, it's just cool because that's actually how, I met her. She was my uh, no way. my firstborn son's Sunday school teacher, and oh uh, she gosh. she was holding him, and I was like, "Who is this angel <laughs> holding my son right now? What's good?" <laughs> you know, so that's hilarious. That's kind of how we got you know started. So it's cool, like six years later, to see she's taking on another position at a new church that we love, and that's she's beautiful. being used by God again to like serve him. You know, so she's like really geeked mm. up about that, and I know that a lot of our listeners are uh fervent fervent believers and just like i don't know i just want i want everybody that is tuning in to like serve the lord you know I, yeah. at, at some capacity because there is no greater fulfillment so my heart is yeah. like heavy for those that you know feel like they don't need to do that in order to be a christian i feel like it's our duty we're commanded to do it you know it's not just yeah. it's this this in this in mind mind and your thing is not just a calling it's a command you know it's like how do we yeah. go out there and spread the gospel to the world, to the end of the earth, you know, and like how else this is what it looks like for us, but what's it look like for, mm -hmm. for, for the rest of the body of Christ with different Dude, spiritual gifts. When you mentioned, uh, your, your wife on like, you know, she, she just got this position and, uh, like she's kind of getting back into being used by God again, something entered my, my mind. And I was, um, I thought about how an artist uses uh, a paintbrush. I want like, just think about an artist, um, you, you know, you have, he has his canvas and whatever he's going to paint or do or draw, uh, he picks up his brush and he, you know, uses that for that specific color for that specific reason. Cause he knows what he wants to do with it. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are so many, uh, in so many times there are seasons in our life where God is the artist. Um, and we're, we're that, you know, brush and God will put us down sometimes he'll pick up another brush and you right. paint it with another color, but that does it um, where I see Christians mess up and fail and kind of get so discouraged is that when God puts down the brush or God's not using them, or it's really when, when it, when Christians think God's not using them is they're not seeing like uh, influence or a lot of attention because you're, you're always being used by God. But there are seasons where, you know, those, the influence fluxes, and, and I was reminded with that with, with your mm -hmm. wife. Um, and, and I see so many people get frustrated where it's like, like God's not using me and blah, 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 blah. And I remember like, you know, through the ups and downs of, of being in ministry, um, I got to that point when, and that's when the Lord showed me that I was like, if God puts me down, I'm okay. He he's the master. He's the, he's the master painter. He knows what he's painting. If he doesn't want to use this brush right now, I'm okay with that because I'm not the one that's painting. And Amen. on that other side of the spectrum of like, um, even if we're not, you know, being used by God, that's okay as well. Because at the end of the day, he knows what he's doing. So I, I, that just came to my mind when uh, oh, I love that. And it's, it's, you're in the waiting season too. You're in the Lord's waiting yeah. room in between sometimes, you know, my wife, yep. um, we had two small kids since that time, you know, so she's mm -hmm. been having to be in that role of a mom right of two small different kids, seasons it's you know different, different seasons. seasons and we me and her talk about that all the time of like i'm just not it's just not the season you know so yeah uh being able that she's you know and she let the door open for her you know what i mean and that's something that i I really preach on this show it's like we do not as christians need to be strong arming our way into any position especially True. in the world of ministry the doors yeah. will be opened you know of course you have to put action to your faith but mm -hmm. the doors will still be opened by god in which you're supposed to walk through yeah proverbs says your gift will make room for you 
and uh, bring you into the presence of great men. Yes, it does. Yeah. That's that's what I stand on. That's I've one of my favorite stood, verses, bro. Yeah, I've always stood on that. Like, um, Lord, I know at the right place at the right time, I know what you've placed inside of me. I know that you're preparing the room for me. And if I'm not in it yet, it's because I'm not ready for it. And the room's not ready for it either. So I'm just like, I'm okay with that. But it takes patience to 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 get to that place. That verse says your gift will make room for you, right? Mm -hmm. And I love how the, like yeah. your gift is always evolving too. You know, it's like the Lord, you know, he'll give you one gift. And the next thing you know, <laughs> he's blessing you with another one out of nowhere. Yep. You know, for instance, to say this, I haven't always been good at taking pictures, but on this trip, uh -huh. bro, the Lord has been like, okay. I got you. <laughs> so like, You got the eye now. <laughs> I've been taking icy photos, dude, and I'm super pumped because it's going to go so well with like the whole book. You know, I've been taking. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for that. My buddy Olivia and you have been inspiring me to make more like um, raw and real video content footage okay. uh, without it just being in awesome. the studio. You know, so I got the camera now. I, I set it up uh, on this little table and I started making videos. I took the camera down to a tree house that's on the property here. That's like, it's yeah, I love tree houses, bro. It's luxurious, but this one's like, this ain't no like, Bougie. this ain't this ain't no like, dad. I'll make I'll make I'll make my son one. You know, this is oh like, this is like, this is on Airbnb. You know what I mean? So that's my just, type of tree house. It's a beautiful like jacuzzi in the background. So I made a video over there um, the other day. I made one on a mountain the other day. Like I've just been making mm. them in different places for the Lord, you know, and for this for yeah. this journey that I'm on. And that would never happen unless he like put the the another gift inside of me, you know. So um, maybe just a person listening that that heard that, yeah. be encouraged that if you don't have that gift, it's not to say that the Lord won't put a new one into your lap, you know. That's right. Have you experienced that yeah. yourself? Have you experienced a new gift like since you said yes to him? Yeah. Um. It like you said, it was evolutionary. I felt like I think it, I think it works in almost like mastery. Like the Lord will give you one gift and how well you steward it, how well you're mm -hmm. faithful with it um, and how much you mature in it. Cause I don't think, you know, I, um, this phrase kind of like, kind of icks me the phrase um, like how to grow your gift. Because I think that if you could grow your spiritual gifts, that means that God gives something that's incomplete. And I don't think God does that. I think God gives perfect gifts. So when God gives us a gift, it's not that we're growing our gifts. It's us growing into the perfect thing that God gave us. Mm -hmm. So in that process of like, um, you know, saying yes to Jesus and God's like, all right, here's this gift. Um, how well I was able to grow into that. It was like God's check mark. All right, you did well with this one. Here's another level. How well is, let's see how well you did with this one. Whoa, you did you did great with that. Let's do another one and another one. And it just keeps growing. That's why the scripture says we should go from glory to glory, from faith to faith. And I think that's how it works. Just mastery, faithfulness, and and being a, a faithful steward. Who said being a Christian is boring? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember yeah. hearing that when I was younger. And it's a video, it's a video game. It's a IRL video game. For I real, bro. I, I love it, man. It's been so cool. And that's awesome that you're um you've been involved with the youth as well and you're really pouring into them bro we need that so yeah that's awesome man i love that and uh tell me a little bit about your studio you kind of put that all together mm -hmm. yourself as well yep i it was so it was funny because at the at the end of last year uh literally december i i was praying for the next year 2023 and i was like lord what do you want me to do in this year and and i really felt god like just put content creation on my heart because I'm, I'm, I have a gift to teach. My, my passion and desire is to just teach people and preach the word of God. Um, and low key, I've always been a YouTuber at heart. I had a Minecraft YouTube <laughs> channel since uh, when I was in elementary school. Uh, so it's always been in me. But Man, you, you know the ropes, though. That's why you got a thousand subs already. Everyone <laughs> know the ropes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, from uh, small beginnings, Minecraft. That's funny. But it was uh, December and. And I was like, okay, Lord, let's do it. I guess this is the year that um, I'll start making videos because it's always been on my heart to like do that stuff. Um, but I just didn't know when. So it was in December of last year that I started doing research because I, I, I love, uh, like I'm an excavator, bro. I love to dig, dig, dig. 
and like <laughs> um, analyze and do research. And that's just how I am. I love numbers and stuff like that. Um, and I, my heart is like, I want to be excellent. I want to produce excellent things because I want to reflect the excellence of my God. So that's Amen. why, like, that's why I wanted to do all of this. And that's why it took so long because I wanted to make it excellent. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't just want to do it on my phone. I know I, I had people tell me, dude, you could start right now. Like, why are you waiting? Like, I get it, but I know what God told me and, and I want to do it how he, how he showed me. The spirit of excellence, bro. Uh, We've been preaching that big time yeah. recently as well. Mm. That's that dude, man, we could talk for hours on that. So let me, <laughs> let me not, <laughs> let me not get, get there. But um, yeah, it was a lot of research, dude. Um, and at the beginning of the year, um, I, I started going into it. But then I did um an opportunity came up at a church in in Los Angeles. So I did um like it was like a nine week like, uh you know you have you ever been to youth camp or kind of like know a little bit about no no but um uh, Dude, a lot gotta, of ministry gotta go. I gotta go as like a counselor. Yeah yeah it's so yeah. fun and and it's powerful. But basically it was like a nine week like ministry leader boot camp that I got to do um over the the spring and the summer, and. Um, when I come, when I got back, that's when I was like, Lord, what's next? And he brought that back to, uh, remembrance of mm. that vision and all that study that I had put and all those, you know, all those hours of research. So that's when I got back into it. So dude, it was about like a good month or two before I actually launched everything that I was continuing doing research light, not, not just like spiritual stuff, but like the, the logistics, lighting, video, sound, uh, quality, like all the little programs, all these different things, like a couple of months of just like nonstop working uh, to get it right. Uh, website building, all these different things, like all that. And it was myself too. Yeah. Um, like yeah. making sure that when I launch, I I'm ready to go full steam ahead. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's dope. I like my entire room. It, I have a pretty small room. It's not like a huge room, but uh, I have, I put my bed all the way in the corner and it's like now the, this, it's pretty, my whole room is pretty much a studio and I have a bed in it <laughs> where I sleep. Um, cause I'm dedicated to, to the work of God. And, uh, I think it turned out to, to be great. I really, really love how, how it turned out. Yeah, bro. It looks amazing. And I think your the way it looks visually is what's mm -hmm. been, uh, very much so captivating, you know, it's kind of, mm. It got me kind of stopping when I'm scrolling by and and checking what you got to say. So I definitely think mm. you did a great job with that. And the simple Amen. look of it looks awesome. And even the color contrast with the the black drop and then the looks like the white wall with the light below it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it looks, you know what's it looks you know great. what's cool? So when I was like think when I was thinking like I need I need a space to record videos because I didn't just want to do it like with like my bed in the back or whatever. And when I looked at my room, I was like I. In every corner, I either have um, like a, a closet with clothes or I have a door or window. So I'm like, what corner can I do this in? <laughs> so, man, we had to innovate. My dad and I, we got together and this this black wall is just it's literally it's a paper wall. Like this is a fake wall behind wow. this is is um it's it's my actual window. Um, and like we we put like this. Uh, paper wall that uh, photographers use for just backdrop but it looks like a fake wall and, Bro, it looks and i amazing. love how it turned out yeah it yeah, looks I so good it. dude that's yeah. awesome you think you'll be in the room for a while when it comes to the video creation or you have plans to expand that a little bit for sure i don't know the timing of it yet mm -hmm. uh but eventually yeah the goal is to scale and uh get get my room back <laughs> do you have any plans of uh monetizing your ministry yeah yeah. And, and like you said, it's, um, every side thing is just to fund the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the, I, I, I just heard this this week from one of my, one of my leaders, he said, he said something about prosperity and poverty. He said, God will use prosperity to fund his kingdom, but the enemy will use poverty to defund the kingdom of God. So, prosperity is is our is our right it's our inheritance as children of god Amen. and i think you know I've, I've i've seen a lot of comments on like oh you know just using jesus or just using religion to get views or uh like um using imagine using jesus to to make money or all these different things and you and there's a lot of those comments but every time that i read it man i love the holy spirit you know what he tells me he tells mm -hmm. me i've i've given you permission to make money off of me because he knows mm -hmm. 
that at the end of the day, like I like we we've been talking about, I'm gonna lay down my crown, and it's all for the kingdom. Every single cent that comes into it, and man, I've I've had some already some crazy donations. Every cent is being reinvested to just reach more people and reach more people and to continue the work. Cause you know, like, dude, mm -hmm. I'm I'm paying for a website, you know, so many services, <laughs> like all these. It's it stacks up. It costs money to run one of these. <laughs> Zoom. I mean, dude, there's so there's so much to I it. Oh, dude. That that people there's don't realize, there. but it's it's helping reach people. Think about how many people this is gonna reach from right. a simple investment. Absolutely, so, bro. Uh yeah, the goal is definitely to monetize and and my Facebook um is already in the process of that. So I'm excited to to start. Well, scaling. congratulations, bro. That's amazing. Yeah. We'll have to uh keep in touch on that journey because uh yeah, that's something the Lord put on my heart in the um mm -hmm. in May of this year was like, all right, I need to get I need to swallow the the old don't ever ask for money, you know, card that I mm -hmm. tried to hold on to forever. And yeah. um and we launched a Patreon. So that's been very helpful Amen. Uh, in that regard. And we want to get more people on there. We definitely think that there has potential for that to be like an online community where we're able to like share more mm -hmm. content that's a little bit more deeper and more like topic centric and just a just an overall yeah. better way to connect with birds and believers. Um, So we got that going. We're going to really, you know, put our focus on that when it comes to um, growing that, but, it, but all throughout this, every, every other thing that we're doing is all, you know, for, for the kingdom and that's specifically that's right. for the kingdom support, you know? So, yeah. um, yeah, having, and, and Jesus, sorry to cut you off real quick. No, you're good, bro. Um, Jesus said, he said, uh, that the labor deserves his wages. He, he desires for us to, to mm. monetize these things. So yeah, it, I think it's foolish to, to have that mentality of like, you know, why would you make money off of, you know, making videos like it's reaching people, it's helping people, it's serving people. God says you deserve your wages. That's so good, bro. And I love yeah. that because it, it because we need to honestly, we need to as ministers and as podcast pastors is what I like to call it. <laughs> That's um, funny. <laughs> we need to make sure that we're um, being a voice for that topic, you know, because yeah. a lot of times um people have heard the contrary, you know, and that's not good. We need to make sure that, uh, that believers know that uh, abundance and prosperity and everything that we need is from God. You know, every, every yeah. perfect gift is from above says that in right. James. So it's yep. like everything that, that God puts in your left hand, everything he puts in your right hand is from the Lord. And we got to consecrate those things back to him because it was never ours to begin with, but that's he's right. going to just keep on increasing. You know, he's the God of testing him in the tithe. And we've been mm -hmm. very faithful on that recently in this past month and we're already Amen. seeing the blessings you know so um, that's beautiful i encourage you to also like you know be preaching on these um these topics that um that we maybe have missed you know even in our own mm. walk where we're like man i've gone to church like for four years now i i've rarely heard this topic mm -hmm. you know I'm like all right lord do you want me to I dive that. into that you know dude i love that because even like before i started this online ministry the the people that I've I've had the privilege and honor to disciple, um, and 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 them come to me for for guidance in Christ, they've always said things such as like, "Man, why do why don't I hear people talk about this or teach about this?" And I feel like part of my calling is exactly that: mm -hmm. teach, preach, and and really just bring to light the things that nobody is talking about. Like I think there's so many believers, man, that they they're having like spiritual things happening to them they're happening they're, they're supernatural things happening to them that they have no explanation about and and they'll think it's the enemy and they'll think it's um like they're crazy or they think that they're insane but it's just the church hasn't offered the spiritual vocabulary to what's actually happening and that's my that's that's my heart's burden to talk about the things that nobody's talking about because people are experiencing these things and they're very real and the church has has been uh, been able to offer the truth in that, but I think we're going to see that change through uh, Gen Z too. So you think that, and put it in kind of a four letter, uh -huh. four uh, word sentence. I don't even know if it's yeah. four words, but do you think we're keeping the Holy Spirit in a box? Uh, I think we have, but I think it's changing. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I feel like the Holy Spirit's like really just like outpouring on on people right now and um uh, mm -hmm. and, and when you were talking about those vocabulary words the word deliverance just popped in my mind mm -hmm. of like something that people are uh that that is, is a need like people need to be delivered from these True. sins that they can't 
lay at the altar themselves, you know, and that's the power of Christ is to come in. He's a sin remover. You yeah. know, it's like, Lord, I can't do that. I can't. It's deliverance is necessary when you can't do it yourself. When you can't give that sin away yourself, you're like, Lord, come through and take this <laughs> out of me. Take this bondage out of me. Take this, yeah. uh, you know, this this heritage uh, curse out of me, you know, and then boom, realign me into your perfect will and your perfect grace. And then take yep. the thorn out of my flesh. Amen. So time. that's what I definitely think is necessary when it comes to that kind of topic, when it comes to it, but it does seem like, you know, I mean, my church is fe feels healthy. I know a lot of other churches that are on the healthier path right now. So Mm -hmm. um, I think things are looking up, even though, you know, politically and economically, things are looking down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, have, I think we'll be fine. Do you have plans to ever, you know, go that path of like talking about world events through a biblical lens? Yeah, I definitely something that I um, that God put on my heart was to give spiritual insight into current events. Like, dude, this video that I, I want to start doing once I like get because I'm still kind of getting into the groove of like making I'm making like three to four shorts a day. Uh, like when I start making long form videos, one of the first ones I want to make is like kind of a video on the topic of what's God's heart concerning aliens. Dude, I can't wait to talk about that because that's something that's huge right now. I don't know if you saw like even just this morning. You can like, practice right now. Go ahead. Let's go. <laughs> little <laughs> quick little segment aliens. But there was um just this morning, um, like there was like a hoax that came out. The people didn't know it was a hoax. I found out later on it was, but um, like they make this super, like super legit looking like um news thing where the Mexican government uh unveiled alien corpse that they've had. And even just recently in the past like month, aliens have been a big talk. So that's a video that I want to do to give spiritual insight. Like, okay, what does what does Jehovah God think about this? What does uh, what does the Bible say about this? And as Christians, how do we how do we manage this? How do we walk through this? How do we have a conversation about this? So, big world events such as that is definitely something that uh, in the in the in the future that's what I'm going to be doing as well. Talk about a cliffhanger, dude! I want to hear what you got. Mm, stay tuned. Subscribe. <laughs> All right, man. Where can people subscribe at? Where do you want to put? Where do you want them to go to find you? So you could. I have a YouTube channel. Uh, you can go to youtubecom slash at Eric Rivera. I have my Instagram. My Instagram is at Eric R Rivera. Man, I, I wish I could just simplify it and just put my full name, but unfortunately, like all of them were taken. Uh, but those those are really the two main ones that you can connect with me to. Um, or you can just go on my website, ericrivera.net, and you'll have all of my links. You can learn a little bit more about me and my testimony uh, there as well. ericrivera.net. I like that. Yeah. Like that. That's the one right there. That's the one where you push because you want people to go straight to your website, bro. You know, and like see your story and like, hey, he's got a website. You know, you pay for that <laughs> thing. You know, That's you might true. as well use it. That's I need true. to start saying my website more too. I always do the yeah. same thing. Um, one of my friends, Lisa Schwartz, that comes on the show sometimes. I'm like, where can uh -huh. the people find you? She's like, Google me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pop up. Google me. I was like, all right. I like that. Google me. I'm not I don't think I'm on the Google me yet level, but we'll see. We'll get years. there. Yeah, we'll get there. But yeah, uh, this is awesome, man. I did want to ask you. So one last thing before we um we mm -hmm. wrap this up. Did you um? so I'm, I connected with a buddy named Taylin one time on a Zoom call. And oh, I yeah. saw you got you guys have a connection as well. Uh, so tell me a little bit about that and how he's been an influence of your ministry so far. Yeah, so uh, when I when I got the vision and the direction from the Lord to 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 go this direction, I'm I I knew that I needed somebody who would help me who's already been there because mm -hmm. I believe in coaching, I believe in mentorship, I believe in discipleship, nice. um, and it's so it's such an underrated uh, aspect of spirituality that you would. Put yourself under somebody who's already at the place that you want to go. And so I knew that was a, a desire in my heart. And man, one day I'm just like, I'm just scrolling through, I think it was probably Instagram or something. And I got an ad and he's like, it was like an ad, like, oh, I help ministers like grow their online ministry. I'm like, well, I'm about to start an online ministry. Let me check this out. And I had a, um, I had a Zoom meeting with him and his team. And I just felt like this is exactly the person that, uh, that God really wanted me to partner with and connect with to help me uh, get to that place. I believe in grace and I believe there's uh, in the exchange of grace, 
Um, and, and he has such a, an evangelistic grace. And that's a grace of influence, a grace to reach people. Um, so even, even if I didn't get anything like from his actual substance of teachings, because what's crazy is the things that he's teaching, God told me, like when I didn't even know anything about like his method and his strategies, I'm like, when I was, when I was um, being taught all these things, I'm like, dude, God already told me to do this. This is so cool. Um, but I think even just the being connected, that, that exchange of grace is, is, is so valuable to me. Um, so it's been, it's been incredible. Um, just being, a you know, being helped by him, coached by him and, uh, his, his entire team is just so supportive and they've been backing me up and with everything too. That's so cool. Yeah. I sent him a DM yeah. the other day, letting him know that you and I were connected. Uh, oh, we, cool. had a, we had a zoom call as well and, uh, we didn't, we didn't work together further, but he definitely opened mm -hmm. my eyes to like, Oh man, there's another level I need to get to, you know, when it comes to yeah. just the way I think about everything that we're doing online, you know, cause it is strategic, you know, it's not just, yeah. you know, throw it out there and hope for the best, you know, it is That's a right. lot of times, but, uh, sometimes you have to be a little bit more, you know, spirit of excellence on it, you know? So, uh, yeah. he, he represented that for sure. And to see just his success and his preaching and him traveling and him like being a, given his life to the Lord, you know, like his, I think mm -hmm. he was sharing with me that he was like playing football and like, next thing you know, the Lord called him into ministry. And it's like, he's been running with that ever since. And like knowing that he went from like zero subscribers to like a million in a year. Yeah. And then now he's given other ministers the blueprint on how to do the that. Same thing. That's incredible. You know? So big shout out to him. What's his last name again? I, for some reason, I can't remember right now. Taylor, uh, Taylor Michael. 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 That's right. I thought it was yeah, Mitchell Taylor for some Michael. reason, but Michael, yeah, sounds right. But uh, it's incredible, man. And, and clearly uh, his influences and his coaching is working because you're reaching a lot of people right now for the kingdom of God, which is so cool. Yeah. And we're um, we're thrilled that we caught you while you're, you know, still on the rise, you know, before you <laughs> blow up, blow up. But uh, we appreciate yeah. you coming on. I like birds. And it was just great meeting you and talking with you and uh, appreciate you uh, joining me while I'm out here in the cabin. Let's go, man. It was a it was a pleasure to be here. I think I think anybody who is willing to lay down their life for the work of ministry and the kingdom of God is, is deserving of honor. So, man, I just wanted to honor you for your dedication, for laying down your life to this, to this cause, to the kingdom of God. Cause I know, I know it's a, it's a hefty price to pay. It's a, it's man. an expensive price to pay. So um, as a, as your fellow coworker in the, in the gospel, just wanted to thank you and honor you for, for your work. And man, thanks I for appreciate bringing me that, on. bro. Eric, yeah. man, you're you're awesome, man. We'll have to reconnect um another time. Sure. And I just can't wait to be part of the journey. And now that we're we're friends and friend of the show, man, we'll yeah. we'll definitely keep in touch, man. And I uh, hope you get to connect with Olivier uh down yes. in Miami and you guys enjoy a great conversation as well. So it's been a great, great to have you, Eric. I look forward yeah. to uh clipping this up and just you know throwing this out there for the people to see. Let's go. Can't wait. All right, brother. Have a good night and uh thanks for coming on the show. You too. Peace. All right, brother.